Hi, everybody. Welcome to the 7,040th episode of Pop This Presents. I'm here today with multiple guests. We've got Pao Fu, oh. Rose Boy, and Sarcastic Sounds. What is happening? Just chilling. So you, t- you two, Sarcastic Sounds and Pao Fu, you guys are in, are you both in Toronto right now? I know you're both in Canada. I'm in Toronto. Okay. And Pao Fu, you Pao are? Fu BC, Canada. How much have, have the three of you actually hung out in person once? One That's time. amazing. All, us three and then like a, a bunch of other like lo-fi people all went to New York. Is there like a yeah. lo-fi con? Well, like yeah, I much. guess yeah, we organized much. a lo-fi con and we just all like rented out like a, it was two houses. I think we just like Airbnb, like a couple houses and just all vibe there for a little while. Yeah. And is that is that where you did like the, the official recording or was it all done like over mm-hmm. emails and stuff? For Eyes Blue, we made it like way after we had all met up. Um, and okay. that was, yeah, just all mm-hmm. like over email, FaceTime, all that stuff. So yourself as a producer, it seems like all of you are like somewhat involved with production. Um, and I'm always really curious about this stuff. So like, I was just wondering about like how like the final mix of it came together. For Lo-Fi, does it matter? Do you, do you try to get into like a super like top studio for like the clearest possible vocals or is it like because it's more intimate and like lo-fi are you like this is how we record our vocals like literally yeah. what you're looking at right now is where the vocals are recorded mm-hmm. with this microphone and with that microphone and in these chairs mm-hmm. like it's like totally not it's totally not um like professional at all for i think like the rose boy sarcastic sounds collaboration like was that all this sort of session like over zoom or over FaceTime, but yeah, yeah that's we just, okay. just yeah, we video, work yeah. always. So Pao Fu, you haven't missed a lot. We were just talking more about Thanksgiving, um, a lo-fi summit that I guess occurred uh, right at the onset of uh, COVID in New York. Yeah, it was our first time meeting, shared a bed together, party. Some, that sounds like lo-fi con to me. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's, that's yeah. classic lo-fi con. It was pretty, it was like a sketchy part in New York too. And it ended pretty crazy. Like some, one of the guys was like high and he started walking on the street at like 3 a.m. He just kept walking all the way to the airport and he's like high out of his mind. And he, Did just, he actually like, walked to the airport? That's really yeah, impressive. I don't even know. Yeah, he, I don't even know how he found out. I, I was walking beside him at 3 in the morning, like in the sketchy part of Brooklyn. He like called an Uber and the Uber like showed up to the spot that he told it to pick him up at. But he was walking away from the spot where it's supposed to pick him up. I was like, why did you just call this Uber? <laughs> This is weird. Lo-fi. <laughs> lo-fi con. Yeah, lo-fi con. You know how we do. <laughs> it's lo-fi con, baby. Um, I was gone at that point for what it's worth. I wasn't there. Everything fell yeah. apart after I left. Damn. So you kind of hold everybody together, which makes yeah, sense that. as a producer, you know? <laughs> If the producer's gone, there's no beat for all these artists to follow. They're just going to start wandering away from their Ubers. Mm-hmm. I think that's yeah. what it was. Yeah. We'll talk about the record that kind of is like the catalyst for having all of you on at the same time. But first, is there a way like within like a few sentences you could each sort of describe how you how you came to have your your moniker of choice? So I had the name Rose Gold. But then I was like, that looks weird. And I feel like so many people do that. And I was like, how about Rose Boy? Because I'm a boy. But then the two O's together and Rose and Boy didn't look good because they sound different as well. And I was like, I don't like that. So put an X in the first part of it. Boom. I think that's dope. And that actually speaks a lot to like the aesthetic quality of sort of like the musical space that that all of you kind of occupy. Like it is very much about like the look and the feel as much mm-hmm. as the sound. So um, super interesting. All right. Sarcastic sounds. It started as my name. I used to sell beats like on like YouTube and my name I started with was sarcastic asshole, which is even worse of a name. Um, and so I, oh, and then once I started like selling some beats and stuff, I was like, Oh, I can't use this as like a professional moniker. So I just changed it to sounds. I don't even remember why I changed it to sounds, but then I changed it to sarcastic sounds. And then I started making lo-fi and then I ended up here and yeah. So there you go. I think there's a lot of artists out there that like, don't like their name in retrospect but like it's yeah. too late and at least it's it's alliterative and yeah. it's mem- it's easy to remember uh palfo i just wanted something that had nothing to do with me because i was like scared that people would search me up and like find my music and i was pretty insecure in high school and then i was just mixing and matching sounds together and i like thought pal sounded cool and i thought Fu sounded cool and i was like i'm gonna do this yeah that makes total sense i was thinking maybe it was like a very like lazy way of saying powerful. Yeah, that's what a lot of people think. But 
No. <laughs> the music has a lot of emotion and like intimacy to it. So I think that it's, it's perfectly fitting that the name was inspired by insecurity and not wanting people to find you on the internet. And uh, yeah, that, that, that completely checks out, even though a ton of people have found you, which we'll get into uh, the record that kind of, to my knowledge is what brought you guys all together. And you can correct me if I'm wrong. That would be eyes like the Atlantic part two. And is that the first collaboration with, with you guys? And I believe there's even another co- collaborator. It, well, like the original song is Sister Prod, which yeah. is just like who from Italy. Like the original song, yeah. And then Alec Benjamin is the other person on it. And it's not our and, first collaboration, though. Okay. And, and Rose Boy and Powerful, I'm sure, can speak to that because they mm-hmm. work a lot together. How, how did you guys? How did you guys find each other then? SoundCloud DMs. Mm-hmm. That's where it goes down. It's crazy too, because like Powerful and I knew about each other's music, but I don't think we like we like. I don't think we ever talked, but then one fateful day in like December 2018, he DM me. He's like, yo, man, like, let's do a song. And I was like, bet, send me something soon. And he's like, gotcha. And then we didn't send each other anything for like three, four months, but we kind of like talked after that. And then, yeah, it's crazy how everything like transpired. It's- uh, it seems like a lot of the fans might, might consider all of you guys like sort of like friends of theirs that they might not actually know in real person. And and so I've seen comments where it's like, oh my God, like they're both on this track. Like, is this a dream and stuff? And it's sort of like, it's almost like they're talking about like two friends of theirs that like now they're hanging out too. This is amazing. Uh, do you guys get a lot of that? Like, do you feel like there's a special sort of relationship with your listeners as opposed to like, you know, look, pop this is all about pop music, but like, let's just say like more like generic pop or something like that you feel like there's a different dynamic here i i would say like i think not just like the three of us or rose went path or whatever like i think just like there's a there's a a certain number of artists that are all very much in the same sort of insert community like to an extent because we all like sort of came up in the same sort of channels and stuff right and so i think that like that Uh is sort of where (laughs) is, is sort of where all that comes from i think um so because it, there is it is like sort of a scene for the genre and stuff do you think it's more about like the the connecting tissue of the genre and and that space do you think it's more about you know the sonic element of the track like oh you know we'll have some like vinyl you know atmospheric like little like scratches in the background or we'll have like you know like that lo-fi sound or is it more about just like the intense like honesty of the music Definitely, but the vinyl crackle. The vinyl crackle. crackle. Yeah, it gotta yeah. be. It's just if you have one a song, low fi. Yeah, fly. you put vinyl crackle over it, then there you go. That's the genre. Like you could have, you could take, you could take lollipop by Lil Wayne. You put some vinyl yeah. crackle in the background. Lo-fi. Vinyl crackle, and then like a hey, listen, and then there you go. That's a low fi yeah, song. Boom. And then like you're crying. You're like, oh my god. Right. Right. Please yeah. just lick him like a lollipop, please. Yeah, <laughs> like exactly. he needs this. You would do um, well in lo-fi. You should try your hand at it. It sounds like mm-hmm. you got it. You got it down. <laughs> so I think all of you guys have like a bit of like, I, I mean, as far as I understand, so Cask sounds like you or Jeremy, uh, yeah. you've done, you're more of like, just like the production is like the main thing. But I think all of you are producers in, you know, at least a few capacities. Is that accurate? I like to mix stuff. I'm, okay. I, I like to think I'm decent at mixing things, but in terms of like making actual beats and like instrumentals and stuff, not the best at. Yeah, I would say that I definitely, I, I, I don't know. I think I definitely am like much more of a producer than the other two are for sure. Mm-hmm. And then Palfu, I think you grew up around music, right? Like your dad was in a punk band and then you started producing beats on like GarageBand. Is that cr- true? Yeah, that's how I kind of started it. I just flew around GarageBand. And then I upgraded to Logic and I tried making beats on there. And like, it was kind of fun, but like, it wasn't my favorite. So then I started recording vocals and that was like a lot more like fun for me, I guess. And so I stuck with that. And Sarcastic Sounds, what do you, what do you produce on? I'm super curious because I like to produce, but my stuff doesn't sound anything like yours. I don't know how you get such like a warm sound on everything. And I produce an FL Studio. All you need to do is add Vinyl Crackle. Have you added Vinyl Crackle yet? Have you added it yet? I haven't. That's the problem. So That's, try yeah. some vinyl crackle and then then talk to me and, and tell me your, your sound isn't warm, right? Anyway, yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <FL Studio. laughs> um, yeah. I hear a lot, like, all right, so I downloaded FL Studio and I'm like an Ableton person mm-hmm. and it was just, I gave up real quick. Yeah. So Producing sucks. 
there's just so many options and for you a lot of the sounds is like sort of like a rich soundscape is it are a lot of those samples that you're taking of like guitars and piano or are you actually playing um, some of it i see you usually gotta... like guitars and pianos is, is stuff that i'm playing like obviously like I'll, you know like for example eyes blue is there's a sample in it but like the guitar and the piano and stuff i played on it awesome and then within within a week um i guess it was just last week right uh palfu's latest ep some boring love songs part five I noticed that this record isn't on that. Was that like a deliberate choice? Uh, well, it's not mine. I'm, I'm just like a featured artist on it. So I'd feel weird if I, if I took it. That makes sense. Uh, but tell us a bit about this project. How is it different from part four? It's new songs. <laughs> <laughs> Pao Fu. Yeah, I don't know. It's not like, I mean, it's all still lo-fi. And it's boring love stories. I, don't know, I, I think the production went up. And like it's personally my favorite EP I've released, so I think the songs are better than the past ones. But yeah, I don't know, still love fire. Well, it's super exciting. Uh, also, sounds great. I wanted to ask, what what do you have against capital letters? I have I have some songs with capital letters, but usually I think I, I just do it with whatever I think looks better, and like I like it a lot. I think I usually like it more when it's like it's a long sentence with no capitals. Well, it reminds me, it brings me back to like some like My Chemical Romance, like Fall Out Boy song titles, like the longer song titles. I, I don't know. I think it's very cool. And I have to say, as somebody else that like has released stuff, I wanted to do all lowercase. And they kept telling me, no, that you couldn't because of like the store policies or whatever. Some distributors and I'm don't like, use lowercase. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. What's with that? Palfu, how did you get around the... Uh, case gate we'll it's it. kind of a cool story actually like at first a lot of my first songs they have capital letters in it too because i didn't know how to do all lowercase yeah and i found out there's a secret button on distro kid because that's what i use and it's like you have to hit this word i forget what word it is but it's like it doesn't look like a button and then you hit it and then like a little check box comes up and it says like keep the titles all lowercase or whatever so i didn't like, know that damn that's the bombshell right there um i actually don't um i i when i started putting out music i specifically made sure to use capitals in my songs because everyone did the lowercase thing and i i, I didn't want to like i thought it was like almost like a cliche at that point of lo-fi so i was like let me just do some capitals real quick that's Personally. good rose, rose rose boy what's your stance i kind of think it just reminds me of like sad texting like you text somebody without like capital letters and they're like, oh, they're sad. Like they've got to be sad. And I think that kind of vibe. Like when it, when it's not a capital, you're saying? Makes yeah, yeah. Sad. When there's no capital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, I'm sorry. Like I didn't mean to do this. Or like, yeah, I'm okay. What about you? And everything's all lowercase. And it's like, oh, they're sad. You take the caps you know? off when you're sad? Yeah, 100%. You have to. True. you have to. Yeah. I feel like sad text messages could be a good next EP title. Mm. Ooh. Positive. Do you guys ever take text messages and turn them into lyrics or like titles for beats? No. No. <laughs> I feel like I do the flip. Like I think of a cool song title. And I'm like, I'm going to start saying that in text. Like, I mean, right. tries to, yeah. <laughs> How are you feeling? I'm a ghost, but it hurts. <laughs> How are you feeling? That is awesome. Eyes blue like the Atlantic part two. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Just plug, just plug the music constantly. And people are like, damn it. I really wanted to know how you were. Um, how or why did, did part two happen? I like I just someone from the label like sent it over to. I think it, it started with me because they wanted like a some, like a lo-fi version of the beat, and then they were gonna figure out like who to put on it. I guess. So, however that happened, it ended up like in front of me. So I just did the beat and like just quickly. Honestly, it didn't take very long. And then before, like I then I just sent it back and and then but that day like. Rose Boy called me and was like, yo, I'm bored. So I was like, okay, cool. Well, I just made this beat. Like, do you want to try something on it? We can send it over to them. And so he did. And it was great. And then we sent it over. And then Rose Boy sent it to Pao Fu. And that's, that was the order of events, as mm -hmm. far as I know. Pao Fu, Pao Fu you, so do you think that your dad, hypothetically, would, does he, would he want you to, to play punk? Does, does, what, is, what, is, what would he think of your, your music in general? I think he likes it. There's a lot of stuff. Like I've made a lot of songs that he doesn't like, and uh, I just ignore him. <laughs> he'll, so he'll tell you. He'll be like, "No." Yeah, but he like he likes most of it. He really like his biggest thing is he likes my lyrics a lot. 
I've made him cry a few times, so that's kind of cool, I guess. What do you guys have, uh, each of you kind of coming up next? What should people that are that are tuning into this? Because obviously we've talked about uh, some Boring Love songs, part five. We've talked about the record that you guys most recently collaborated on. What is on the horizon? Who wants to go Country lo-fi. Yeah. Country lo-fi, obviously. No, no actually. For real. Me and Rosebud no, have a country lo-fi song dropping in January. Uh-huh. 100%. Jimmy. Jimmy Rose Boy's Jimmy. major label debut is going to be a country, country song. song. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I swear to God. We, no, we're not making this up. Like, it sounds. I believe you. I believe you. Yeah, right. This is for real. So, Country Lo Fi, January. <laughs> do, we get a, do we get a title? Is it Jimmy? I think it's called Jimmy. It's Just called Jimmy. Jimmy. That's exciting. Palfu, what about, what about you? Is there going to be a Boring Love Songs Part 6? No. No, I'm done with some Boring Love Stories. I'm, uh, I'm moving on. I don't know to to what though. I, I think, think sad text life. messages. <laughs> be the next one. I don't think so. <laughs> don't so so you guys are going country, um, <laughs> and then do do any of you do every any of you especially you know being like very like uh, hip hop hip hop adjacent at least do you ever just want to go like super hard on a track? Do you ever do like some like dirty south? I made a song for Lil Wayne oh. earlier this year. It's on his last album. Yeah, it's like, and it's like, it's just like a straight hip hop song, like eight oh eight's everything. I need to do my fucking research, man. <laughs> <laughs> how do I, how do I not know that shit? God there damn! You go. Now you know. So yes. unless, unless I'm being trolled right now, but no, I swear uh, to God. Did you put the vinyl cracker on crackle? On it? Yes, I did. I snuck it in. 100%. What's I the record? Mahogany. I'm listening to that right after it's called, this. It's called Mahogany. Okay, that's Ooh. awesome. Um, I was waiting for a chance to slip that in the interview. That's like my favorite thing that's ever happened to me. And I try to bring it up in every conversation. How so. did that come about? How does that possibly come about? Did he like hear your stuff? On uh, no, it was through like a relationship that I had with like one of his producers. And he what just, kind of relationship? A uh, romantic one. So we were dating for a couple of years. No, uh, <laughs> it's just like a, a, a dude that I met like in, in Toronto at a beat battle, actually, like years and years ago. It's, it's not a dude. Like it's actually a very like legendary hip hop producer, named Manny Fresh. If you look him up afterwards, he put he just like put the the beat in front of Lil Wayne like a while ago, and he cut it. And then I found out that it was on the album like a couple hours before the album came out. The beat got in front of him, and then he gets like the he selection, just, and he just happened to choose it. Yeah, I mean, I think he just cuts a lot of records, and then they just happen to choose it for the album. And you, so, so all right. So you've done more like traditional hip hop stuff, mm-hmm. uh, Palfu. If you had to genre hop. To something what what do you think it would be next be yeah no, i've tried recording punk before like there's kind of punk aspects in a lot of my songs but like yeah. i've done like acoustic kind of punkish songs before and i love it like punk is like my favorite genre and if i could like i'm pretty jealous of mgk right now because he's like blowing he's up. oh my That's god yeah it's really good and uh what I, you I, doing, I, don't get me started i don't want to be the punk guy I wish I could make punk music. I wish I could sing like Powerful so I could make punk music because that sounds really fun. Yeah, I know. Really I love music. it. Like, I, I've i always wanted to have like a big band and like just play like live shows with a band screaming punk. That'd be pretty epic. I'll play in a punk band with you. Let's yeah. do it. Um, but all right. I guess as the very last thing, as a closing note, um, you guys mentioned Machine Gun Kelly earlier. If each of you wants to just say like a, a dream collaboration here at Pop Dust, we, we bring artists together. Hey, Justin Bieber. That's what Papa said. I want to make a song with Jack Harlow. I think that'd be fun. Cool. Drake. And I'm manifesting that now. And it's going to happen before the end of 2021. Lo-fi Drake song. Yeah, lo-fi Drake song. Featuring Honestly, Drake. why not, dude? You already got you already got Lil Wayne, his mentor. I'll just text Lil Wayne. I'll have him link it up, make a group text for all of us. And I'm going to make it happen. Do you? This seems like, like a lot of like Canada pride there. Because we got... Sarcastic Sounds and Palfu saying Justin Bieber and Drake. Oh, that's true. Well, all four of us will do a song together. Imagine that. Rose Boy can do his little bullshit Jack Harlow track. I'll be, I'll be an extra. <laughs> yeah. I'll be an extra in the music video. <laughs> yeah. I mean, with, with the trajectory and everything you guys are doing, I would not be surprised at all if that happens. So it's just okay. breathe, breathe it into the universe. Yep. And uh, all right, man. Well, thank thank you guys. Thank all three of you for uh, you know joining us today for Pop Dust Presents. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. And yeah, let's touch base on some stuff in the future. Beautiful. Definitely check out uh, some Boring Love Songs Part 5 right now. And of course, I was like the Atlantic Part 2. There's a lot of sequels mm-hmm. happening. A lot of reboots. Yeah. Yep. And uh, 
yeah, check all that stuff out and uh, get your tickets now for uh, for LoFiCon yes. 2021. They're selling fast. <laughs> Almost sold out. We'll be back when Jimmy comes out. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, man. literally, literally. Okay. I look forward to it. All right. Thank, thank you guys. Thanks for having thank us. Thank you, man. Bye.